Good morning and welcome to worship coming to you from St. Matthew Lutheran Church in York, Pennsylvania. We welcome all of you as we gather this morning. We welcome those of you who are joining us via Facebook Live or the St. Matthew Lutheran Church York PA YouTube channel or the St. Matthew website at stmatt.org. We also welcome those who are joining us via the radio broadcast of this service on AM 1350 and Sports Radio 98.9 FM. I want to thank those who sponsored today's radio broadcast. We have two sponsorships again, to the glory of God and in honor of our son, Seth, and daughter-in-law, Patty. This is sponsored by Kathy and Lavera Roseman. And in loving memory of my parents, Chester R. and Miriam H. Balker, and my brothers, Kenneth and Chester Jr. And this is sponsored by Lorraine Havis and family. The St. Matthew Church building remains open by appointment only. Please call the office first at 845-2721 to let us know that you are coming for any reason. Various groups have resumed meeting on occasion here in the building. Please check with the leader of your group or the church office to see if your group is now meeting inside the St. Matthew building. St. Matthew's worship schedule includes in-person worship on Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. in the auditorium, and this service on Sundays at 11 a.m. on the radio and online. On Wednesday evenings at 8.30 p.m. on Facebook, St. Matthew offers a service of Compline, also known as night prayer. I commend the St. Matthew website to your attention where you will find lots of information and resources. We've been very pleased with the good response to our appeal for Lutheran World Relief personal care kits. Details and guidelines about how to prepare these kits can be found in the eBlast, the St. Matthew website, the January-February issue of the St. Matthew Tidings. There's also an instructional video on the St. Matthew website and the St. Matthew YouTube channel on how to assemble and pack these kits. We invite you to bring them to the church Monday through Friday during office hours, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday evenings between 7 and 7.30 p.m., or on Sunday mornings, would you be coming for the in-person services? We'll continue to receive these kits up through Holy Week and Easter. On Wednesdays in Lent, we're offering a study discussion series on gratitude and abundance, a video series by Diana Butler Bass. This series is led by pastors and staff and offered via Zoom on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. This will continue through Holy Week, March the 31st. Each session stands on its own, so if you miss one, you can still join in others. The Zoom link is in the eBlast and on the church website. In-person worship resumed this morning with one service at 8.30 a.m. in the St. Matthew Auditorium. Strict mitigation procedures will be expected, including the wearing of face masks, social distancing, and no congregational singing. Ushers and greeters are needed for in-person services. Please contact Marsha Furman or the church office. St. Matthew's Holy Week schedule includes the following. On Palm Sunday, there will be in-person services at 8.30 and 11 a.m. on the East Lawn area. An online service and the radio broadcast service will premiere at 11 a.m. online and on the radio. In the event of inclement weather, services will be held in the nave with live streaming to the auditorium for additional seating. Monday, Thursday, April the 1st, a digital service will be released on Facebook and YouTube at noon. At 7 p.m., an in-person service will be held in the nave and will include the stripping of the altar. On Good Friday, a digital service will be released on Facebook and YouTube at noon. In addition, a radio service will be broadcast on 1350 AM and 98.9 FM, also at noon. At 7 p.m. on Good Friday, an in-person service will be held in the auditorium. On Easter Sunday, we will have a sunrise service at 6.30 AM in the courtyard and in-person services at 8.30 and 11 a.m. on the East Lawn area. 
Our online service and the radio broadcast will premiere also at 11 a.m. And again, if there is inclement weather, these services will be in the nave with live streaming to the auditorium. I want to thank you and many others for your generous and ongoing financial support of St. Matthew Church. The website and the weekly broadcaster list various ways that you can offer a gift, and we thank you very much for that. Today's service will include the digital celebration of Holy Communion. Participation, as always, is entirely your choice. If you'd like to join in communion, I encourage you to prepare now with some bread and wine or grape juice. Again, we thank you for joining us today for worship here at St. Matthew Lutheran Church. We'll continue with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws close to us in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails, for the promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, our sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Together, may we journey in the way of Jesus. Amen.
from our God who sustains us with everlasting love, who brings forth a new creation in Christ, who leads us in the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, grace and abundant mercy be with you all. And also you. Let us pray. O God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
predictions come lay them down at the foot of the cross jesus is waiting god so loved the world we will continue with the children's message by stephanie johnson our director of children's ministry and discipleship connector hi kids and adults out there we're going to talk about light today. This is the weekend when we all moved our clocks one hour ahead, so now we have more light at the end of the day. It's a good day to talk about light. Can you think of times or celebrations when we use candles or light? For example, we put candles on a birthday cake. At Christmas time, people put lights everywhere and they look so beautiful. In the time before Christmas, we call that Advent. We have an Advent wreath with candles on it. And we light one candle each week until all of the candles are lit. And that brings us to Christmas Eve. We have lights in the sky for the 4th of July, don't we? Fireworks. And even when we gather for worship, we use candles to symbolize God's presence. Did you know that there are lots of cultures and religions that use light to symbolize something? For example, there's a five-day festival in India called Diwali. I think I'm saying that right. They use clay lamps that symbolize the inner light protecting from the darkness. On the third day, they have a big fireworks celebration, just like we do for the 4th of July. And the whole festival is a celebration of good overcoming evil. You've probably heard of the Jewish festival Hanukkah. This is an eight-day festival where they use a special candle holder called a menorah. There are actually nine candles on the menorah, the middle one is the one that they use to light each of the other candles. So on the first day, they light one candle, then two, then three, then four, until all of them are lit. In Scandinavian countries, that includes Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, they have a special festival called St. Lucia Day. And there are actually churches in this country that celebrate it too, if they have a Scandinavian heritage. St. Lucia Day is the beginning of the Christmas season in Scandinavia. And it's a way of bringing hope and light into the world at a time when it's really dark. Each town chooses their own Lucia and she dresses up in a white gown and wears a wreath or crown of candles on her head. And she processes through the town with lots of children behind her also wearing white robes and carrying candles or star topped scepters. A scepter is kind of like a special staff or a decorative stick kind of that they carry. And even in homes, the oldest girl usually dresses up as Lucia, and then she serves coffee and treats to the rest of the family. Sounds like fun. Lots of celebrations use light. In the Christian church, we talk about Jesus as being the light of the world. Jesus' light does overcome the darkness. It's stronger than the darkness. That's what we celebrate at Easter. On Good Friday, Jesus died. But now he lives, and his light is everywhere in the whole world. We're going to sing a song about light. In fact, some of you may know the tune. I'm pretty sure a lot of you adults out there know the tune. It's You Are My Sunshine. Now, grown-ups, before you start rolling your eyes at me, bear with me. I really am going somewhere with this. We're going to change the words. But first, we're going to sing the words that we know. So sing along with me if you know. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Okay, ready for some new words? Those of you in Facebook world, I hope you can see that. And if you're on the radio, you can listen and jump in as you can. Sing it with me if you like. Lord Jesus Christ, you're our light and savior. You take the darkness and make it bright. We are so grateful, so very grateful. Help us always to follow your light. Let's try that again. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you're our light and savior. You take the darkness and make it bright. We are so grateful, so very grateful. Help us always to follow your light. Jesus is the light of the world and his light really does overcome the darkness. That's something to celebrate every single day. Have a light-filled week, everybody. Bye. Good morning. A reading from Numbers in the second chapter. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, for there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food? Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who has bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may be exposed, may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Savior. Amen. Go out onto the street and ask anyone you might happen to see if they would quote you a Bible verse. And you might actually find someone who can do that. But I suspect more often than not, you'll get a few blank, puzzled stares. 
On the other hand, if you would do the same thing except ask a slightly different question, if you'd ask people to name a Bible verse, you're more than likely going to get the answer, John 3.16. Because even people who have no idea what that verse is have seen it. They've seen John 3.16 at sporting events and parades and in other public places. For many years, the person holding the John 3.16 sign at a sporting event had a rainbow-colored full wig on. Because it's likely that John 3.16 is still the best-known verse of Scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. A verse in the middle of today's gospel text from John. The verse that lives in the center of many people's faith and theology. Pastor Carla Ade, a Disciples of Christ pastor in Kansas City, recounts her reading of the novel A Murmur of Bees by Sophia Segovia. It's an historical novel set in Mexico that traces the life of one family as they flee the horrors and disease and death that plague their town during the 1918 pandemic. Because before anyone seems to realize what is happening, death swoops into this town and begins to rob family after family of their mothers and their fathers, their children. In fact, the townspeople become so frightened of this new flu that they stop having funerals altogether for fear that more will catch the deadly disease when they go to the church or attend the service at the graveside. So the people of that town decide to simply carry their deceased family members out in the front of their home and place them by the edge of the street and wait for the undertaker to stop by with a wooden cart and to carry the beloved family member off to the cemetery for a burial all alone. One of those situations was going on one day. The undertaker is preparing to bury a teenage boy, but he finds that the teenage boy he's about to bury is actually moving. When the priest who is to conduct the graveside service discovers that the boy who was dead is now alive, he's shocked. He sends a telegram to the archbishop, quote, miracle happened, come urgently. The priest and the doctor then go to check on the boy. And the boy begins to explain that when the undertaker came by, he was just too sick to move. And when he was awakened in the cemetery, he was just too weak to walk home. But actually, the boy explains, he never died. The priest is devastated. Quickly, he sends another telegram to the archbishop, quote, never died, never resurrected, just recovered by himself. Forgive me, end quote. The embarrassed priest feels like this must be the worst day of his life. But the doctor comes up to the priest and tries to reassure him by saying, Father, this is the best possible miracle. Because for the first time, the people of that village realized that you could suffer with this new influenza and yet survive. They realized that some people can actually live.
A text from John's Gospel, the third chapter, including 316, describes life. The problem is, is that we typically read this verse and this text the same way the priest read the miracle in this story. We think that the only thing that seems to matter is what happens to us after we die. And to be sure, that's important. But it's not the only thing. And if we focus on that, we might miss what I think is maybe the real miracle in our text. And that miracle is how the very fullness of life in God is available and given to all of us right now in this life. If you take an outsider's view and start to look at the first few chapters of the, of, of the Gospel of John, you might get the sense that Jesus is becoming fed up with some of the people to whom he's trying to share the good news. The Gospel starts with Jesus being the light of the world, the light that no darkness can overcome. Moves into chapter 2 in the wedding at Cana, where Jesus turns the water into wine, the first of his signs, as they say in the Gospel. Then on to the scene in the temple where Jesus pitches a fit at the money changing and trading that's going on there at the church. Crowds are increasing. More and more people are following Jesus and walking around with him, including the disciples. Why? Because they want to see more signs. It's almost as though Jesus is becoming a sideshow. Just prior to the text we read this morning, Jesus is approached by a learned leader of the Pharisees, Nicodemus. Privately under the darkness of light, night of night, Nicodemus seems to want to come to Jesus and to talk with him and to try to figure out who Jesus really is. And what he's all about. Jesus and Nicodemus have this exchange about being born anew. And then we get to our text. Jesus' narrative response to Nicodemus. Jesus speaking about life and salvation, Jesus proclaiming the radical and encompassing love of God for the whole world. And this love of God that is given through Jesus and received by faith is not transactional. It's transformational. God calls us to new life in Jesus, and it is more than an event. It is an invitation into a way of life and a life-changing, life-sustaining relationship. And in our text, Jesus, hearkening back to Moses in the wilderness as recorded in Numbers 21, declares that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and that the people who looked up upon that servant serpent would be healed, so Jesus must also, as the Son of Man, be lifted up. Up, live, so, love. The text is filled with big little words. Small words with very deep meanings, big little words to help us understand and accept and celebrate God's gracious, saving love. Because believing in Jesus is really about trusting in Jesus. And to trust in Jesus is not simply believing something that happened a long time ago. Trusting in Jesus is to allow our lives to be transformed by that same Jesus that Nicodemus encountered at night. 
The same Jesus we encounter in this text. The same Jesus who is not offering a transaction, but transformation. It can be hard to hear. It can be harder to understand, and it may be even hardest of all to accept. And that may explain why Nicodemus, an intelligent and accomplished man, was scratching his head in confusion as he went back out into the darkness. We are invited to come to the light as we read in John's Gospel. We are invited to receive the love that God offers, the love that God so gives to the world. Jesus calls you and me to place our trust in God's abundant love, to give ourselves over and into God's keeping completely and fully. We're encouraged to give our hearts over to the most radical love and way of life possible. A love, a life, a faith that is centered not only on the future, but focused on the here and now and grounded in a relationship with God who is with us always, including here and now in this time and in this place. We're invited into a life and a relationship that is the gift of the so loving God, whose beloved son Jesus is lifted up on a cross so that we might live always with God through Jesus. As verse 17 of our text says, for God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. Amen.
Let us join together in confessing our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. God of grace, you sent your Son into the world that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministries of service in your name. Bless our partners in ministry, our ELCA partner churches, and young adults in global mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown. Nourish seas and deserts, wilderness areas and cities. Give water to thirsty lands. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You sustain your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead in times of crisis. It's where their stress resources cause violence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or without homes. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort to those who mourn. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. By grace we have been saved. Fill this congregation to overflowing with your grace, that we may show mercy to others. Nourish any in our midst who are hungry, especially children, and bless our ministries of feeding and shelter. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy God, your Son was lifted up so that your children might believe in him. We know we are supposed to be grateful and not complain, but we are sick and tired of coping and struggling and wondering when things will change. The pandemic death toll in Brazil approaches 2,000 per day, Almost 240,000 people have died in Yemen's civil war alone. The numbers of people living without homes in York and elsewhere continue to rise. Why does it feel like you aren't doing anything, O oh God? But even in that same breath, we acknowledge that you do provide, even if we receive your provision with ungrateful and complaining hearts. You sustain us with moments of clear and beautiful weather. You give us minds for thinking and hands for creating new ways to solve problems. You fill souls with your love so that we see inspiration and hope in acts of kindness and service. We see Ahmed, a nine-year-old boy in Yemen who teaches classes to his peers when teachers can't travel through their war-torn city to reach the school. We see Naomi, a survivor of, of the Boko Haram abduction of the Chibok girls in Nigeria, who resisted pressure from her captors to marry and convert to Islam, and who supported girls younger than herself through the ordeal. We see police officers from Myanmar who defected into India rather than follow orders to shoot protesters during the recent military coup. 
continue to sustain us even as we grumble, O God, and change our hearts so that we might receive your provision with joy and gratitude. Bless Kathleen Waters, Stephen Klein, and the families and friends of Ryan Rossum, Beverly Kopp, and Vincent Tassia, Jr., that they especially may know the comfort of your presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your Son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace, and so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. O oh God of resurrection and new life, with this bread and cup we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Grace our table, bless this feast, and reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Breathe new life into us as you raise up your church to be the body of Christ for the world, burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray in the words of Jesus, who accompanies us through our wilderness. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come and be fed with the body and blood of Christ given and shed for you.
of steadfast love at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world send us in the power of your spirit that our lives may bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen we are what God made us to be created in Christ Jesus for good works chosen as holy and beloved freed to serve our neighbor. God bless us that we may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks.